You are listening to the cycling podcast at the Giro d'Italia in association with Rafa. Today we are in Etna. per la storia, ricordatelo è triste sei tu il venuto di te stesso non è rimasto That was the sound of some Vincenzo Nibali fans in Cefalu at the start of stage four. A stage that finished at Mount Etna. Lots of support for Nibali. Uh, that takes makes redundant my, my usual opening question, Lionel. Where are we? Where are we? Well, we're at Etna. We're in a bar. There was a spoiler um, out there. Uh, yeah, we're surrounded by, fortunately, cold lava. There's not been an eruption. We'll probably get away with it, I think, now. It smells a bit, though, doesn't it? It's stunning, isn't it, though? It smells a bit. Yeah, it does, but, it's, but it is stunning. We, mean, do, we, do, we did reckon that in our, in our new Maserati that we've taken delivery of, we could outrun the lava if there was to be an eruption. Well, and I also said that we'd be safe in the press room because the lava presumably won't have an accreditation badge, so it won't be allowed in. Yes, you did <laughs> say that. That's correct. They're very strict, very strict with that. Well, um, first sort of showdown of the, the Giro, uh, proper... Showdown on the mountain here. Water pistols at dawn, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know what we expected, but there was a headwind, a um, bit of a phony war up there, up the slopes. Give us a tale of the, the tap up, please, Lionel. I will, Richard, yeah. Uh, stage 481 kilometres from Chefalu to Etna. It was won by Jan Palanch of the UAE Emirates team. He won a couple of years ago at Abitoni in a similar sort of stage, got into the break and held on on the climb. But he said in the press conference afterwards that this was much harder, not just because the climb is harder and, and less regular than Abatoni, but also because of the strong headwind. It was a nice late birthday present for the Slovenian rider. He was 25 three days ago. The pink jersey has passed from quick steps Fernando Gaviria to quick steps Bob Jungles. As predicted by me last night. As predicted at your Says birthday dinner. with a mouthful of Arancini. Arancino. Well, he was desperate to point it out, wasn't he? I mean, he, nothing was going to stop Not him. Not going to let that one pass. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, very similar to last year in a way because uh, Jungles took the pink jersey at Sestola from his quick step teammate Gianluca Brambila. And he held it for three days then. Looking at the route, well, we can speculate a bit later on how long Jungles will hold the pink jersey. But he is in Pink. Uh, Paul Anch's stage win was impressive. He got into a break with three other riders, Eugenio Alafacci of Trek, Jacques Janser van Rensburg of Dimension Data and Pavel Brut of Gazprom. Their lead was 8 minutes 14 at its maximum. On the climb itself, it went one way and the other, didn't it? At one point, it looked like Paul Anch might get caught. Then it looked like he'd stay away. Then it looked like he might get caught. He held on to win. Behind him, there weren't really fireworks, were there? Pierre Roland had, an, had a bit of an attack, didn't last terribly long. Paolo Turalongo, Sicilian rider. Igor Anton and Jesper Hansen also made moves. But probably the most impressive move of the day was Ilnur Zakarin, who recovered from a crash on a tight right-hand corner before the climb, attacked and gained some seconds. He'd lost a few seconds a couple of days ago, gained those back. One of the other crash victims was Stephen Kreuzwick of Lotto NL Jumbo. He was a bit bashed up at the finish. We'll hear from him later in the episode. So, Jungles is in pink. Geraint Thomas won the sprint for third behind Zacharin, and he got a little time bonus, so he's at six seconds. Then pretty much everybody else is at ten seconds. That's Adam Yates, Vincenzo Nibali, Quintana, Tom de Moulin, Mikel Landa, Thibaut Pino, etc. The Ciclamino jersey is still held by Andre Greipel. Polanch now has the King of the Mountains jersey and Bob Jungles also has the white jersey. Sad news for BMC Racing's Rowan Dennis. He is out after his crash two days ago. The Etna stage today, it could have produced fireworks. He said it, it didn't, but it was interesting as the riders fanned across the road and there was this, this, this truce almost. You just realise, looking at that group, how many top riders there are in the race, as if we need a reminder we see every, every day uh, the calibre riders um, leading the teams and and you realise what an open uh, and strong race this, this could be. But that was really, it was fascinating to watch them almost lining up um, across the road at one point after uh, Nibali's, what, what I'll call a TV attack, I think it was. was that, does that That's exactly what Matt White said, a TV, TV attack. attack. Right, that was certainly for the local fans, I think. Who else impressed? I thought Pino was quite frisky. 
Garrett Thomas looked good. Demula had a little go as well. But it's a long way to go. Jungels is, is in pink. He, he's a sort of B-list contender. I had a chat with him yesterday, actually, which we'll play in, in an episode later this week. Um, you know, he'll be pleased to be in pink. Um, better on his shoulders than perhaps a, a real one of the real outstanding favourites for overall victory. And you mentioned Lionel. How long could he keep it? He could keep it for 10 days or so now. Well, yeah, I mean, we've got the time trial at Montefalco coming up at the, the end of this block of racing, haven't we? Um, he was... Bob Jungles was sixth in Chianti's time trial last year. The, so wine tri- the wine trial? The wine trial, of course, yeah. Um, the field last year, you know, maybe wasn't a stellar time trial field. I mean, Bambi Cancellara was there. It was terrible rain, if you remember, Richard. Um, and there was that tricky descent, wasn't there? So y- Jungles, you know, he is a rider very similar to Tom de Moulin, really. He can climb well and can time trial well. So he could go very deep in this Giro and having finished six overall last year and won the white jersey last year you know he could equal or even better that this time round looking very impressive yeah I mean I thought that it was a bit of a missed opportunity for some of well the climbers really or not I mean given the conditions it was very hard to attack and it must have been very hard to attack that said just talking to some of the direct sportives and riders after the Race opinion was slightly split on that. Paolo Slongo, Vincenzo Nibali's coach, said that well, it's not really an excuse to headwind because it was a, a road that, that climbed in hairpin bend. So you know, one hairpin, well, one stretch was against the wind, one stretch was with the wind. And um, Matt White, certainly Orica Scott's direct sportive, so Adam Yates's direct sportive, thought that it was a pretty poor show by some of the, the climbers and it was pretty defensive. In fact, shall we hear from, well, let's hear first from. Adam Yates this morning in Chefalu, um, sounding very confident before the stage, and Matt White afterwards, um, having watched Adam Yates ride into third place overall. I was going good so far. First mountain stage today. I don't actually know the climb, but on paper it looks like a tough one. And the wind's going to be pretty strong today, but a big headwind, so it might be a bit defensive on the climb, but uh, we'll just wait and see. It's going to be one of those, isn't it? Like, nobody really wants to take control because if you take a jersey, they have to ride for the next couple of days. and. You know, that last week's that's on everyone's mind. So, yeah, I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see, like I said. But uh, myself, personally, I feel good. So, let's see. I think the big leaders uh, didn't want the jersey. It's pretty clear. Obviously, uh, Nibley, uh, those guys did their best to chase there today and uh, put in a little bit of attack for the fans in the final. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, obviously, Nairo doesn't want the jersey. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie star were very, very quiet today and uh, other teams as well. So we were, we were keen to look for the stage win, but we weren't going to put everything. You know, we're, we're one of many favourites, but it was it could have been it was there for the taking, that's for sure. So that was Matt White pretty much accusing Movistar of having, having ridden pretty defensively. I went straight to Movistar's direct sportive team manager, Eusebio Unzue, and put that to him that they really should have been a bit more aggressive today. Here's what he said. It's not that he didn't want the jersey, it just wasn't an objective today. The goal was not to lose time on any of the rivals, and we did that, except for Zakarin gaining a few seconds. Another thing, chaps, that Unzue talked about tonight was, was Zakarin gaining time, and um, I think it really dawned on Unzue today how many good time trialists there are in this race. And we know how much time trialing there is in this. Well, there's, there's some wine trialing and then there's some time trialing. So we've got in Spoleto, the, the wine trial, that is, how far is it? It's 39.8 kilometers. And then we've got the even longer one. Oh, no, sorry, slightly shorter. Uh, on the last day, Monza. So, uh, you know, the, the opportunities are going to be fairly limited for the climbers to gain. Well, I think they need, on someone like t- Bob Jungels or one of the best time trialists in the race, Tom Dumoulin, Someone like Naira Quintana probably needs to gain four minutes, four or five minutes over the course of those two time trials. And um, today it's an opportunity gone already, isn't it? Well, Quintana seemed very reluctant to really get involved in anything today. He was following, following. And even when Nibali attacked, it was uh, one of his teammates, Andre Amador, who, who chased him down rather than Quintana responding himself. So he's obviously, he is the sort of right, he does tend to, to get stronger as, as he, in every Grand Tour th- he's ridden I think he's tended to get stronger as the race has gone on um, yeah, Quintana has just got through these opening days with barely a mention we've, we've barely mentioned Quintana's it's 
Well, that's how you win Grand Tours, isn't it? I was yeah. just going to counter the the argument there. Yeah, we want to see explosive racing, perhaps, n you know, not here on it. No, that's the wrong that's the wrong word to use. Maybe Temp don't want to tempt fate until we get down the bottom. But we want to see them all go head to head. But it is only day four of a three week race. I know there's now a, a big gap between the, here, this point and the really serious mountains. There's kind of opportunities for a bit of shadow boxing. Several hilly stages, medium mountain stages. There's Europa, of course, before you get into the um, the proper mountains in the last week. But if you were going to say, how do you win this Giro? You do it very quietly and you, you, you get busier as the race goes on. Because I'm just looking back at last year, probably this time last year, we were talking about Dumoulin. Maybe he could go all the way, you know, with his but time trialing strength. There wasn't, there wasn't quite the same amount of time trialing last year, was there? I think, I mean, that's, that's the difference. And the, the fact that there are so many good time trials, it might, they might be in a position, riders like Quintana, where they're expecting waiting for hoping that five or six good time trialists collapse in the mountains and that's a really really dangerous position to be in and also Quintana you know you have to remember that he's, he's targeting the double the Giro and the Tour so you know, I, I was talking about that I had an interesting conversation yesterday with the Sky one of the Sky coaches Zabi Artecho who used to well, work for Movistar and and you know just talking about the difficulty of that double and and i think everyone agrees that you need to go in slightly undercooked to the first grand tour and quintana has not raced a lot and um, before the giro but he might find himself you know with a lot of ground to make up and um, by the time he's his best form does start to kick in when we get to the high mountains we'd well, expect pino as well to be a stronger time trialist than quintana wouldn't we marginally i would marginally. think so I, I would think he, he could gain a minute or a minute and a half on quintana over the two time trials at least we are listening to the cycling podcast at the giro d'italia supported by science in sport science in sport fueled by science. Yeah, I born in Sicily and uh, come back here with the Giro is amazing. I left Sicily after 12 years when I was still young. Many people came yesterday and said, remember me, remember me. It's a long time, it's, uh, it's hard to remember, but I like that, uh, it was emotional. And these people you've just been talking to and taking pictures with, are they family or friends? They're friends because they came from where I born. Because it's a small town, it's just 12,000 people, you know, it's really small and they came just for me. They was uh, really close to me when I was uh, really young, seven years old. And how well do you know Etna, both the mountain, the volcano and the climb as a cyclist? I don't know really. I went there for a school trip when I was so young, six years old, you know, just uh, with the school. <laughs> That was uh, Salvatore Puccio, the team Skyrider, one of four Sicilians in the race. Daniel spoke to him at the start in Cefalu this morning. Before that, we heard from Science of Sport. Uh, we are very grateful to Science of Sport for their sponsorship. A reminder that you can get 20% off all Science of Sport products at scienceofsport.com if you enter the code CPOD20. That's CPOD20. This little bit was missing from the podcast a couple of nights ago because we lost a chunk in, in travelling from Sardinia to here, we Jumbles. misplaced a bit of the podcast. We did. I dropped it somewhere in the sea between Sardinia and Sicily, it and it mm -hmm. meant that we had a... Yeah, we, there was a, a jump in time. There was supposed to be an extra little bit in the Let's middle there. But we maybe release it at some point, just on its own, just for <laughs> people's... Because I'm sure... You know what else happening? Hang on. Hang on. Something is happening. You know what else happened in Cefalu this morning? What? I had a granita. Did you? Oh, you had a granita as well. A breakfast for ice cream. Ice cream for breakfast. Reference to those who haven't heard our Kilometer Zero. With sponsorship liaison, David Luxon, a.k.a. Da Bob Sugar, David the Deal. <laughs> there he is. He's sitting at the next table, <laughs> chuckling. Um, we're getting a bit excited there because somebody is in our midst. Somebody. And there's been a lot of requests for this, this person to appear on the podcast again. But I don't think he can get in. I think the sponsorship liaison needs to I think he's, earn his crust I, I think and go he, and I think and he's trying find to... Him. He's definitely out there. He's out there. Um, anyway, what were we going to talk about this this section, Daniel? Well, there, there was quite a bit to clean up, wasn't there? Not least, well, Stephen Kreiswick's wounds had to be cleaned up at the finish line. He was very unhappy, Bunny, as he came over the line. He'd crashed, and um, when a number of riders went the wrong way um, at the bottom of the climb near Nicolosi, and um, Kreiswick came down in a crash. I think Zachary came down as well, or got held up. And, um, yeah, so the, the Dutch challenge at this Giro is very strong, isn't it? We know um, Dumoulin, Mollema and Kreuzwijk all going for general classification. 
and I spoke to Kreiswick and Dumoulin at the finish. Obviously conflicting fortunes for those two Dutchmen today. What exactly happened, I, I don't know. Uh, a few guys missed the corner at high speed uh, to the right. Uh, certainly uh, I hit the deck and uh, I think I only have uh, some abrasions on my left side and uh, hopefully that's it and uh, we will see. It wasn't really possible to make any differences. So uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then you end up with a bigger group. Yeah. I think if we had Tailwind today, then uh, for sure some guys would have attacked. But uh, it's also very early in Giro yet. So if you take the victory here, you have the pink jersey and you have to defend it for a long time. So I, I think it, it's too early. Together with the headwind and being it so early, then uh, you get a quite a boring uh, climb maybe. Yeah. Okay. yeah, if you make the third week that hard, then everybody is a little bit scared then to, to spend too much energy. So uh, oh, it was a good day. So, Daniel, did you see Stephen Croiswick's wounds when he got back to the bus? Because I had the misfortune, the whole of the back of his shorts were all torn open, two big red bloody wounds right on the softest part of his bottom. I, did, I didn't look inspect his bottom, Lionel, but he did have a nasty, gr- nastily grazed knee. I, I also didn't inspect his bottom, but it was hanging Just out of his shorts, so I couldn't, couldn't, uh, uh, I couldn't miss it, really. Look but who it is. Look oh. who it is. <laughs> Chiro Scogni Emilio from Gazzetta della Sport. Hello, Chiro. Listeners, I have uh, tears in my eyes. Unfortunately, you can't see me now, but I'm really proud to be back here and uh, I can't contain my, my emotion. Also, my English that is not, uh, as you know, excellent. Maybe it will be even worse because for me, it's even difficult to speak. Thank you. Happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> Okay, Chiro. Yes. Well, we're happy as well, and lots of our listeners will be happy because there've been a lot of requests for where is Chiro has been uh, uh, has been trending on Twitter. That question: Where is Chiro? Listeners, fortunately, nothing has changed in my mind and in cycling. As usual, uh, my priority is not uh, this cycling race, but certainly other stuff. You know that. We are very lucky because in this edition, I mean, this uh, edition of the Giro is really historical. Why? You know, maybe because it's the 100th edition? Yes, but this is not the most important topic. The most important topic, Sardinia and Sicily together in the same edition. So a lot of sand, a lot of beaches and a lot of beautiful photos. And today in Gazzetta, we we published a marvelous picture of my soul sister Pippo Pozzato that certainly in the rest of the day he went to the beach. Uh, I must confess, dear listeners, when I can in the Giro, I go to the beach every day. If you're listening to this at home and playing Chiro Bingo, I think you've got full house. A full house, a full house. <laughs> Chiro, you're usually good at clearing up uh, little things, incidents of, that we're not really quite sure about. There was an incident in the race today, um, Javier Moreno, pulled the jersey of a uh, Italian rider on Team Sky, another Italian rider on Team Sky, Diego Rosa, yeah. and had words with him. I actually tried to find out from Rosa exactly what happens. I spoke to him at the finish line. Here's what he said. What happened when uh, the Bahrain rider, Moreno, pulled you back? Uh, yeah, I'm a stupid man and uh, nothing. Uh, I think uh, he can, uh, all can see in the TV and uh, nothing. Do you know what it was about? Uh, it's a stress moment of the race and uh, if the guy push uh, the other guy out of the road uh, with the po- uh, on the public it looks a bit dangerous yeah and after uh, the rider drop and crash and uh, broke the to be honest I couldn't really make much sense of Diego Rosa uh, version of, of events he talked about a crash I've been trying to find out from Team Sky exa- exactly what went on and exactly what that was about Chiro do you have any idea at all about this uh, quarrel, about this polemic. Yeah, well, I have the possibility to talk to Moreno immediately after s- the stage. Uh, he told me that uh, it was a lot of confusion and uh, Rose, uh, um, a lot of confusion to take the best position in the peloton. And he told me that Rosa gave him a punch on his back. And so for this reason, he had this reaction. Uh, I haven't d- d- yet the possibility to speak to Rosa, but uh, this is what Moreno told me. Well, that must have happened quite a bit earlier in the race, if that's if that's correct, because uh, certainly we had a good view. In fact, you commented, Lionel, on 
how good the camera angles were on the bunch as they as they cli- start to climb it. Uh, some fantastically close um, shots of, of the of the bunch, and we had a pretty good view of, of the incident happening and, and the build up to it, and it seemed to come out of nowhere. So, if something happened, it must have happened earlier in the stage, or it could have happened just off camera as Sky Riders were moving up past because uh, there were a little knot of Bade Merida riders there, weren't there? So maybe he gave him maybe you did give him a. Uh, a whack on the back just you know to say he was coming through or i'm uh, move out of the way or whatever um but yeah we don't know rosa's side of the story yet so well we, we kind of do but um rosa well we don't know whether we don't know whether rosa would deny um you know laying a hand on uh, moreno so we probably you know talking of six and one half a done on the other possibly. talking of bahrain merida isn't it time for il lupo che conosceva ogni angolo della provincia al rientro ci controllava. The wolf who knew every corner of the province checked us out as we came home. Now, Chiro, we heard there in the clip, we heard Vincenzo Nibali referring to Lupo, the wolf. Famously, that is uh, Vincenzo Nibali's father. I hope that you were going to point him out to me at the finish today because I think he was around, but we lost each other, didn't we, in the confusion after the finish. Yes, uh, could I reveal something special to our friends of the podcast? I think uh, it's a good occasion because unlikely I have to write a lot in these days, and uh, not today, and I have to go, but I can reveal something special. I had uh, some days ago, no, some, uh, two months ago, more or less, a uh, good conversation with Vincenzo Nibali you know that Nibali already wrote uh, two books uh, one uh, about his life more or less and one about uh, the last edition of the Giro d'Italia and maybe in the future he could uh, write another book who knows but uh, I talk uh, with Vincenzo with my art and I ask him Vincenzo please never ask me to write a book with you and for you Otherwise, I'm going to no longer talk uh, to you any longer. You don't never ask me to write a book for you and with you. Never, Vincenzo. Please. And I think that he understood and no, now I'm confident <laughs> Chiro, that... Chiro, before you go, before you go, how do you judge his performance so far? Or, or his form so far? In my opinion, not bad. Uh, his season so far, certainly he was able to win the Tour of Croatia, but his season so far hasn't been so good. But today, more or less, I had the impression then that he was more or less on the level of, of the other main favorites. And if, if we remember last year that in the very first mountain stage, it was a little bit later in Roccarasso, if you remember, he attacked, but then uh, Dumoulin attacked himself and then then Nibali lost some seconds. In my opinion, I had the impression that he could be in a better shape comparing to last year. I'm Simon Mottram. I'm the founder and chief executive of Rafa. The ultimate cycling jersey pre-Rafa, it would probably be either the San Rafael jersey from 1963, which Jacques Anquetil wore, uh, red, white, pale blue, beautiful script logo, somewhat linked to our brand, but that's not why it's beautiful. I think I just think it works fantastically well. I have a soft spot for Mappe, like lots of people. The other jersey I always really loved was the BP Peugeot jersey that Simpson wore and many other people wore. Just so simple and so dramatic. The Rafa Cycling Club is the largest global community of its kind. Members share their passion for the road through rides, events, exclusive club kits and racing. Find out more at rafa.cc. My name is uh, Martina and uh, I work uh, in uh, Rifugio Sapienza Place uh, in uh, Monte Etna at um, Barisagonal. Um, restaurant. We've had some eruption on the volcano this year, but they haven't been very dramatic. It's been nothing like 2001, when we got completely destroyed. The lava was erupting 200 meters from where we are. It went nearly all the way down to Nicolosi at the bottom, and we were right in its path. It always takes you by surprise. On any day, at any time, you never know what might happen. From one minute to the next, there might be an eruption, an earthquake, 
anything. We've had eruptions that have lasted uh, half an hour and eruptions that have lasted for months. Usually, the only warning sign is a rumbling from inside the volcano. Solitamente si sentono dei boati, solo questo. Calm down, Lionel. After hearing that, he's looking as nervous as he was in the airport the other night. My eyes have widened. Can we wrap this up? It's time to wrap this up. Let's this go. could erupt at any time. Well, here we're, we are sitting, we're surrounded by um, black old lava, which the you know falls all the way down, really, 20 kilometers down the, down the climb. Uh, incredible. So it does erupt on a regular basis. could happen at any moment. Well, get on with it then. Okay, um, <laughs> what else do we have to clear up from today's stage? A few few good performances that perhaps we, well, I wouldn't say we didn't expect, but um, a few sort of outliers in that group of favourites. It was good to see Davide Formolo there, uh, the Cannondale Drapak rider. Um, I hate to have Hugh to Carthy keep... Hugh Carthy as well. Hugh Carthy looked very good. hate to have to keep pointing this out. We've pointed out at least once before, but um, this week... Well, on Friday, um, it is the anniversary of um, Cannondale, or the second year anniversary of Cannondale's last World Tour win. That came courtesy of Davide Formolo in La Spezia at a similar point in the Giro d'Italia. And um, yeah, I spoke to Formolo this morning actually just about how much sort of pressure is on the team to break that drought. Just first of all, how have the first three days of the Giro gone for you? Oh, that's nice. I think today we had the first test. First three days was nice to stay in the wheel, sit and drink and save energy. Now I think uh, we have a big test. All the climber is, is included. All the climber. We have a really steep climb in the final. Uh, should be cross headwind so the wind can, can stop the race a bit. But the climb are so, is so steep and so, so long, so hopefully there will be a big difference in the top. Have you looked at the climb, Davide? Do you know the climb? Yeah, I looked just a few times. I've been there for attitude in a camp on the heat now, just a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's steep. In the beginning, after Nicolosi, they see the, the town. It's pretty steep and then they're all getting wide and it's, but it's keeping really around 8-10% of the way. There are a few times where it's a little bit easier, but after the key, after the little bit descending, getting harder. And David, on Friday, it's going to be two years since your stage win in the Giro and it's two years since the team's last World Tour win. Yeah. Do you talk about that in the team? Do you feel a lot of pressure because of that in the team? Well, we just do our best every race and then we will see at the end of the race so what, what was the results. I mean, if you do your best uh, every race, you do your best training, you do your best in a race, you can lose nothing more. No? Today would be a good day to end the two years, end the drought. Yeah, um, for me, and we have a really strong team as well. Like if you look at the start list, we have Michael Vuce, we have John Dombrowski, Davide Villela, Alex House, and Hugh Carty, a lot of good climbers. So today can be a nice day for, for the team. Well, you can't say they didn't have a go today, Cannondale, because Pierre Rolland was up the road for quite a long time, never really looked like um, he was getting enough of a gap. Um, perhaps needed some people to come after him but perhaps also the fact that nobody went after him and because he went so far from the finish a sign that nobody really sees Pierre Hollande as a, as a real danger for the overall um, so he obviously paid for his effort in the wind it was always going to be very difficult to go from that far out, wasn't it? Yeah, and just in that clip, you know, Formula listed the climbers that they've got in this race. They really should come away with something, shouldn't they? I mean, they've got a lot of guys who are capable of winning stages um, on, on hilly days, like, like Formula himself, Roland, Alex Howes, uh, Rusty Woods. So they're Tom, pretty. Tommy Elter Slachter. And Carthy as well. So they're pretty well stacked. They are. Um, and they are here for stage wins. I mean, Roland is not. I think they've been pretty explicit about that, that they're here uh, for for stage wins. and uh, Well, yeah, but I mean, just because they say he's here, for, they're here for stage wins, Pierre Rolland has a pedigree, but it, I was making the point that it, his fellow riders are not exactly leaping on his wheel thinking... It's a this funny is one, a though, isn't it? One to because I thought the same about Zacharin when he went, that, you know, he's, a, he's an outside threat. I mean, a year ago, we were talking about him as a real contender for the, the Giro. It hasn't perhaps had the same build-up this year to excite people to the same extent, but he is nevertheless 
uh, a dangerous rider. Well, yeah, particularly as he was he was still well placed, wasn't he, when he crashed out very badly last year? Yeah, yeah, and then he came back and had a good Tour de France. So mm. I mean, he really is an out. We had a ter- a remember the, the terrible time trial, fell off a few times in the time trial. That's right. Just a rotten luck at the Giro last year. Yeah, and and hasn't started has started with a bit of bad luck this time, but it's obviously going very well. Just a word on Polanche, the stage winner, because I sometimes feel that you know he's on a day like today exploits like that kind of get um, written off fairly quickly or kind of glossed over fairly quickly but that was a really impressive ride he said in the press conference that he was worried that the group that got away was only four riders quite a long time to get a lot of stage to get through before getting to the bottom of the climb only four of them to do that work um, and yet he was still st- strong enough to pull away from those r- other three on the climb and as we said at the very start you know, that gap was three minutes with around 10 kilometres to go, and then he lost a minute, minute of it in five kilometres, and then it was chipping down a little bit. And you know, as they get towards the top of the climbs, the time gaps, you know, how reliable are they, the numbers that we see on the screen? It's sometimes difficult to tell. I had this, went particularly when they showed the long shot of the, the finish straight, I had a sort of horrible thought that maybe the... Uh, Zacharin or even the, the next group were going to come round the corner and if they'd had him in their sights it might have been a very different story but a, an impressive win by Polanche and one that they really planned for because but they, um, Team UAE were here in this region weren't they Daniel in uh, some point start of last month doing a lot of training a lot of training and wrecking and he said in the press conference how well he knows the climb and how well he knew the stage leading up to it Yeah and a massive result obviously for that team it's a new team this year or it's a team that um, was formed on the basis of, or from the ashes, really, of Lamprey, um, Lamprey Merida. They were last year, and I know there's a lot of well, there's there's some friction behind the scenes. There's, there's a bit of wrangling going on with Merida, who were their former bike sponsors, who have now teamed up with Bahrain. Merida will maybe tell you about that in the next few days, in the next couple of weeks. Um, could be could be an interesting story developing there um, but yeah it's a team that uh, obviously came to the Giro with stage wins very much the priority and I, I don't think realistically they believe Rui Costa can win the race so well, they he, lost, um, he lost a fair bit of time, he today. time yeah, he's today. really the biggest name not to have been in that front group I think uh, I'm not I'm got in front of me exactly how much he lost but it was it was over a minute minute and a half something yeah like that. so they'll be thrilled and I think they've they've got more opportunities they will have more more opportunities with Valerio Conti, I particularly expect to go well and target stage wins, especially in the medium mountains. Yeah, well, Valerio Conti finished ahead of Rui Costa today. Um, in the in the part of the podcast that was lost the other night, I, I reintroduced Peddler de Charme, which we're relaunching. Um, not sure that Planche would be a contender for that. He was a bit ragged up the mountain. Um, Lionel, yeah, a, he was, a sight I mean, that Lionel recognised. Yeah, uh, I mean, if it, could, the body language was, he was going an awful lot faster than me, but that's, mm. that's my climbing style. <laughs> Zigzagging and uh, pedalling. It was not, old not school, so much wasn't square, it? it like a sort of 50s, 50s throwback almost. But we are looking for your nominations for Peddler de Charme. A few, uh, a few, few came in today when, when we, we sent a tweet out. Um, we're, we're trying to make it more interactive this year. We're taking nominations. We're going to have a, a vote uh, on maybe Thursday evening. If we, we get four nominations, have a vote. You decide who wins Pedal de Charme. We've got lovely new uh, Rafa designed and made T-shirts to present. Um, we'll be offering T-shirts to our listeners as well at some point. Um, and, uh, yeah, send in your nominations. A reminder that it's not it's not about winning Pedal de Charme. It's about... It, well, it's very broad, but it's about elegance, class. A lot of nominations actually today for Fernando Gaviria, who was a pink jersey and, and lost it with good, good grace and a, and a big smile. Very nice pink socks he had on as well, I noticed. For that alone, surely deserves a nomination. Actually, should we just quickly, very, very quickly hear from Fernando Gaviria at his press conference yesterday in... Um, where were we yesterday? We were near Chefaloo. Palermo. Um, just Chefaloo. a curious oh, little thing... Well, that's where we were yesterday as well. <laughs> Curious little thing. Oh, the, oh, there's trouble. There's trouble. <laughs> Lionel's giving Richard the death stare. Um, just a curious little thing about where he won in Cagliari. He won on Via Roma. I think we mentioned this in the podcast. And I asked him yesterday at his press conference whether he, he was aware of this fact. Obviously, Via Roma has not been particularly kind to him. He was poised to win Milan San Remo a couple of years ago, crashed, and then didn't go too well this year. Anyway, here's what he said. I knew that yesterday has won en la Via Roma a Cagliari. ¿Qué te hace pensar? Que me trae la fortuna. 
there was Gaviria saying in Spanish that Via Roma owed him a favour. Not the right Via Roma, the wrong Via Roma, but still. Yeah, it's not the same Via Roma, is it? But uh, it's a, a, an evocative old name, isn't it? A few nominations also for Pedro de Charme for uh, Lucas Pustelberger, our first uh, Malia Rosa, uh, winner of Stage 1, the Austrian rider, Bora Hansgro. He is the subject, actually, of tomorrow's Kilometer Zero, the second Kilometer Zero. The first one came out on the rest day. That was A Tale of Two Islands. Uh, episode two is uh, Lucas's story, A Day in Pink. And uh, we hear from his mother, his coach, his sports director, and from the man himself. So that comes out. Are they... We're getting the, the message here that they're yeah, clearing the Hoover's up. coming the Hoover's out, isn't on. it? I mean, clearing they're, they're us out. They're hoovering we'll around. Talking, our... talking of the Hoover, what's the human Hoover, a.k.a. Lionel Burney, going to eat tonight? I don't know. I've just enjoyed that arancini. Um, very nice deep-fried rice ball in the shape of a pear, it was, in fact. And it had some sort of bolognese ragu in the middle. Mm. Yeah, quite nice. Build a gap. Tasty. Surely dinner can only be an hour beckons, or so away. Dinner beckons. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, couple more bits of housekeeping we ha- we put out Giro Extra today our first Giro Extra this will be an occasional uh, little treat for friends of the podcast sign up as a friend of the podcast at thecyclingpodcast.com £10 gains you access to all the exclusive friends only material we've released I think four friends specials this year including our, our look ahead to this Giro and look back at the previous 99 Giri and our second friends of the podcast special of the Giro will come out on Monday, I think. Monday is the rest day, isn't it? And that's the Stephen Roach story from the 1987 Giro, the story of how he won that. And it's uh, it's pretty... It's uh, excellent. It's good. Yeah. He's very good, Stephen Roach, isn't he? Um, that's, is that, that it? That's about uh, it. Because I've got to go and stick my Panini stickers into Well, my you've album. been doing little else, Lionel. I'm um, disappointed so far. I have more swaps than I have stickers stuck in, so I need to maybe take my swaps around the bus. Okay, well, that's 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 about all for tonight. One other thing, we've got another Cycling Podcast Femina coming soon as well. Um, that will be released uh, fairly imminently. I'm just working on that. It's a conversation with Lizzie Dagnan, myself and Ola Shinui with Lizzie Dagnan. So that's all for tonight. Thank you very much, Lionel. Any the, more? Yeah, the sticker more packet doubles? has been opened to predict tomorrow's winner. It will be Caleb Ewan. Yes, wow. great chance. That great did, chance That did tomorrow. come out Last of the, w- of that packet. Or it's Lord genuine. Or Alex Howes. No, nah, well, okay. Um, I think Caleb Ewan's more likely. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's all for tonight. Thank you very much, Lionel. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, chaps. A reminder that you can watch the Giro d'Italia live and exclusive on Eurosport and Eurosport Player. UK viewers can also watch highlights of each stage at 10pm on free-to-air channel Quest. There's a special offer for the Eurosport Player, £29.99 for an all-access pass for the rest of 2017. Details of availability, compatible devices and full terms and conditions can be found on the Eurosport Player website, uk.eurosportplayer.com. You've been listening to the Cycling Podcast in association with Rafa. Thanks to them and thanks to our other sponsors, Science and Sport and Maserati, and to All Press Espresso for supporting our morning show, Kilometer Zero. The music in this episode is by Amara Terra. Thanks to them. Thanks to those who help keep us on the road, in particular David Luxon, Jonathan Rowe, Nick Christian and Simon Gill. And thanks to John Mooney who produced this episode. Stop press, Richard, if there's such a thing in audio, because there's some breaking news. Just as we finished recording the podcast, and Daniel scurried away a la Chiro. He's away, but we uh, checked our uh, Twitter feeds, as you do, and it seems that Javier Moreno, the Bahrain rider, has been disqualified. I saw his director sportif, Alberto Volpi, uh, coming out of the race jury meeting room earlier on, looking pretty serious, uh, gl- uh, phone glued to his ear, um, and I thought, it would probably be about that, but I didn't expect such a such a drastic um, reaction. And it does suggest that um, what Moreno told Chiro either isn't true or hasn't held water. It, you, know, you would think that if there was any credible evidence that Rosa had laid a hand on Moreno first, then Rosa would have been dealt with just as seriously. So we have to assume from the jury's decision that they took exception to Moreno's behaviour. And as the Giro unfolds, that's Nibali losing a teammate unnecessarily, isn't it?
that could be significant, and uh, you know that 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 will 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 return to that. You'll return to that without me because I forgot to mention in this episode that this was my last episode before returning home, and then I'll come back out for the the final week. So I'll leave it in your and Daniel's very safe hands. We'll miss you, Buffalo. Yeah.